Well, our beautiful kudu are just making themselves more beautiful. There's a little bit of grooming going on, making sure the hair is brushed and the coat is in good condition for a Friday night out on the town. So our kudu are definitely, the ladies are prepping for a afternoon of, well, attracting males, I would imagine. Although most of the kudu by now probably would have mated. You'll find a lot of them give birth around the summer months, so their gestation period would have meant that they would have mated a little bit earlier in the year, so around March, April, that would have been the time that we would have seen. Although with kudu, you will find them actually sometimes giving birth throughout the year. Being browsers, they generally find food at any time. They can find food even in the winter months. There's some of the trees here that still provide nutrients for them. And so they do give birth at random times of the year. But the most concentrated amount of young is in the summer periods. Now, interestingly enough, I said I was going to head to Triage Dam, but I've got stuck with my kudu because there's not often that you actually see them right out in the open like this. Kudu generally, when they are around vehicles or any sort of noise that they're not sure about, they'll try and get themselves into somewhat of a thick area so that they can camouflage. They've got this beautiful colored coat that blends perfectly in amongst foliage and vegetation and you'll have a system where they can actually hide around that sort of object that's causing the disturbance. So to see them right out in the open and actually to watch them gracefully walking around is quite special. So I'm quite enjoying watching our kudu moving around in the afternoon sun. So Pisces, Bobby, you're commenting on those ears and it is one of the most striking features of the kudu fam, well, and kudu in particular, in Nyala and Bushbuck do have big ears, but the kudus are really massive, and they'll use those to be able to hear. Remember, these guys, as I was saying, are spending a lot of time in thickets, and thickets mean that there's not an opportunity to see very well. It's difficult to spot things like leopard and lion and dense, thick foliage, and so those massive ears are vitally important to the kudu's survival. You'll find that they'll use those ears to scan almost like a big satellite dish, and those will pick up all kinds of sound waves, and they'll be able to determine what's going on around them just by listening. So vitally important, but they do make them look a little bit comical from time to time. They look far too large for the animal's face, so quite nice to see these guys out and about. Right, Seb, I think let's carry on and see if we can't find a male here somewhere. Uh... So, Francis and Israel...